Hey everyone, in today's video I wanted to share five fun and effective activities to really help students review those numbers 0 through 10. Now at the beginning of the year, especially in kindergarten and first grade, number sense is really what we are honing in on in terms of our math skills. And in kindergarten, students are really introduced to those numbers 0 through 5, while in first grade we are reviewing those numbers 0 through 10. Those numbers 0 through 10 are really the building blocks to everything we are going to learn in math. So we really wanna spend that time at the beginning of the year reviewing this, reteaching as needed, and making sure students have a solid understanding of what those numbers really mean. So in today's video, I am sharing five of my favorite activities to really help reinforce learning those numbers. If you are ready to see these activities, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. Any different math skill to our students, there are two main things I want you to keep in mind. Number one, our teaching of these activities should be multi-sensory. We need our students to not just be able to see these numbers, but we really need them to be able to feel them. When students are able to practice one-to-one -one correspondence and actually grab that many manipulatives, show that many manipulatives, it really helps them understand what these numbers actually represent. The second thing to keep in mind, and it goes right along with that multi-sensory learning, is to use the CR a framework. Now I did a whole video about CRA framework, it looks like this right here, but essentially when you're teaching students a skill, you want to walk them through three different parts and you want to explicitly teach three different parts. You want to teach them that skill in a concrete way, and that's where those manipulatives are going to come in. You want to teach students that skill in a representational way, and that means students should be able to draw five items if we're talking about five things. They should also be able to verbally say what five items actually represents. Basically, they should be able to represent that skill. Here we're talking about number sense. So they should be able to represent that number in a different way than using manipulatives. And then moving from the concrete, the C, to the representational, Last, we have the abstract learning of a skill, which in this case would mean students would see the number five and they would know what that means. They would know it means five cubes. They would know it means a drawing of five things. They would know the number five in many different aspects of its being, right? They would know five dots on a dice. They would know five students in a class. They recognize that all those fives, the word five, I'm thinking of other examples here, all mean the same thing. So keeping those two things in mind, all five of the activities I am sharing today really help reinforce both the CRA framework and making sure our learning is multi-sensory. That being said, let's dive into the activities. Activity number one is called Frogs on a Log. This one is actually included in my SJT Math Club. Uh, here's a picture of what it looks like, but I will show you how to play it in just a moment. And what I love about this game is students are essentially getting to see and feel numbers in many different ways. First, they go ahead and spin a spinner, so they have to identify what number they land on, and there it's just the numeral. Then they use one-to-one -one correspondence to build that many frogs on a log, and I like to do that with just some green cubes. And lastly, they have to represent that number in a different way by showing that number in a 10 frame. It's a very simple concept, so let me show you how it works. Frogs on a Log is a super simple game. Students will get a log piece and they will also get a spinner. And I would definitely, you know, laminate these for future use. And students can play this with a partner or they can play it independently. But basically using a spinner or a pencil and paper clip, students will spin. They land on the numeral three. Then they have to make it. These are their little frogs that they'll put on a log. So one, two, three. And then they go ahead over here. And for the number that they landed on, this can be two separate ways. It'll be up to you how you want to play this. But either this can be three because they landed on three, or it can be their third spin. So you can have them go eight times, or you can have them try to go until they get one of each. So we'll go just in order. This will be spin number three. One, two, three. So they get to see that number represented in a 10 frame. Then if students are going independently, they will spin again, or if they're doing with a partner, their partner will go next, but it's played the same way. Here we have eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight frogs on a log, and again, they will represent that on their 10 frame. This is great so students can see different ways to make a number. They have the numeral form, 
They have it here in a concrete fashion with manipulatives, and then they also have it in a 10 frame. Now, like I said, that activity is included in the SJT Math Club. So if you are a member, it is found in the number sense category under hands-on activities. So you can find that there. But if you aren't, I hope you can see that it is pretty easy to recreate this type of activity. Whether you have a spinner like that with just the numbers, you can create one yourself and make copies and students can go ahead and spin it. And then it doesn't need to be frogs on a log, but you could print out some pictures of a log and then they just need green cubes. You could print out pictures of a leaf and they could use red cubes for like little ladybugs. You could do this many different ways. But basically students would go ahead and spin it just like they did here, identify what number they landed on. You could even do this with dice if you wanna use the numbers one through six or if you have a 10 sided die, however you want to do this. But they roll a number to identify what the number looks like. Then they have to make that number. They have to build it in some sort of way using manipulatives and one-to-one -one correspondence. And then they have to represent that number using a 10 frame, which for that you could easily just print out some 10 frames. You could even laminate them. They could go ahead and show it that way, erase it, spin and play again. Activities number two and three I have shared many times in the past, but the reason I share these over and over again is because they are highly effective and highly engaging. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on either of these. Let me quickly dive through them. Activity number two I love is button jars right here. This is from my hands-on number sense unit. And all you have to do with this, if you don't have this unit, it's totally fine. Print out some pictures of some jars. And on the jars, there are different pictures. And what I have my students do, especially in first grade, they will take the jars and they spend a moment filling it up to match whatever number is on the button jar, right? So they fill these up with buttons just to match whatever number is on there. So very simple one-to-one -one correspondence. After students fill up those button jars, I then have them rearrange the jars to make sure they are ordered from least to greatest. Again, it is a simple but highly effective activity for students to see that number, go ahead and use that one-to-one -one correspondence again to create that number, and then order the numbers as well. So that takes it one step further. Now, if you have, this is a fun tip, I don't have a picture of it right now, but I did this in the past. If you have a bunch of like baby food jars or any other clear jar, all you need is 10 of them if you're doing numbers zero through 10 or one through 10. And students can do this in a real way too without just printing out those pictures. Now, printing out pictures is easy, but if you have clear jars, students can go ahead and fill those with buttons or counters or any sort of manipulative and do the same activity. In fact, when students actually get to put things in a real jar, it's a little bit more fun for them. Activity number three is an all-time favorite. Here it is at roll and build. Now, again, we are going to be practicing a lot of the same types of things as we did in button jars or frogs on a log. Here, students are actually going to roll dice. So they will roll either one die to practice numbers one through six, or they can roll two to practice the numbers two through 12. That will be up to you. But here, students will not only count up the number of dice, but then they will build a tower of cubes to show that number and match it on the roll and build board. I usually have students play with a partner and they continue until all of the numbers have been completely covered up. But what I love about this is it shows those numbers in a different format. So when you are thinking about button jars, they are taking little manipulatives and they are filling up a jar. And so they can kind of see the different numbers scattered about. They can see how nine is a lot more buttons than maybe one or two buttons. And here students are seeing the same amount of objects, but they're seeing it in a different way. Here they are simply able to to look at their board and they can see that the six tower or the 12 tower is going to be a lot bigger than that one or the two tower. Again, they're kind of seeing these numbers represented in different formats, which is great for them. Now, like I said, both button jars and roll and build, I have mentioned so many times on this channel just because they are so effective. They can both be found in this unit right here. It is my number sense unit for numbers zero through 20 and all the activities in there can easily be um, zero to 10. You just use those cards and it can be different and just as a little bonus activity I'll throw into this video, it is also included in that unit. Another activity I love is called Match and Make, and it looks like this right here. 
Here students will just shuffle up the cards and they have to first match the numeral with the number word. So here students are seeing two different representations of the number. They have the numeral and the number word. And then after they go ahead and match those, they need to make that number using manipulatives. So here they have a third representation. They have a concrete representation. It's a great way for students to see these numbers represented in many different ways. So I guess this video kind of has six of my favorite activities, but that was a little bonus one. All right, next up I have a digital game that I love for many different reasons. Um, and this one's going to be a freebie for you. So I have this available in both Seesaw and Google Slides that your students can open it up in. I personally think it works better in Seesaw. So let me show you what this looks like. Here's what the activity looks like when you open it up in Seesaw. And you can see there's a few different ways students can actually practice these numbers. So first on the left-hand side, they have write it. And so they can pick their marker. I let, I let them know they can, you know, pick a color and they can, I think if they click here, yeah, they can choose how big they want it to be. And first they will go ahead and trace that number one. Then the students can say the number aloud one, they read it. Then I have them use their highlighter. Again, I remind them they can pick a color and they need to find all the number ones that they can in this little grid. And they go ahead and highlight it. So they will see the number one represented in different fonts. Um, sometimes the number one is created this way with kind of a little line at the bottom. So I like them to see that as well, see the different ways these numbers are made. They highlight it. And lastly is that one-to-one -one correspondence. So they will drag one pepperoni to the pizza. Done. And then they'll go to the next slide. Sometimes with this read it portion, I will have students use the microphone to go ahead and record themselves reading it, but I tell them they have to do that at the end. Um, so that way they can still use the slide and the same steps follow. Once they get to number six, they are still tracing and reading and finding, but then instead of a pepperoni pizza, they are dragging fish to the ocean. So here they'll drag six and it goes up to 10. If your students happen to have technology in the classroom and they have time for some independent math centers, that is a great one to reinforce all different skills. We had number formation, finding different numbers, saying the number aloud, and then again, one-to-one -one correspondence. And last but not least, activity number five is really going to help students practice that abstract part of the CRA framework. So this one is a game called One More, One Less. Here is a picture of what it looks like and let me just show you how to play. This game is most fun to be played with a partner so they're working together to kind of fill up this big grid uh, or see how many of these hexagons they can fill in. And it's an abstract way to practice these numbers. So students will first roll one die. This is the one die version. Um, I do have in the pack a one with two dice and with three dice as well. So for first grade students, they could go up to numbers to 12 and then 18. So one, students can either over here, and at the beginning it's gonna be easy, they're going to find a hexagon that is either one more or one less than the number they rolled. So I could either color in a zero or a two. This will get more difficult as the board, you know, fills in and students work together, but this gives them more options. So they're not just finding a one that they rolled, they're looking for one more or one less. Then their partner will go three, so I can do one more or one less, so a two or a four. A very simple game you'll see, but again, it's great for quick abstract practice. And of course, if students need a number line, they can absolutely use a number line to help them or a hundreds chart, whatever will help them see what number is more or less. You wanna give them as many tools as they need to be able to complete this. But as you can see, it's a very simple game that just continues on until the whole board is colored in. As you can see, that game is great because students are rolling a die. They are quickly subitizing that number to recognize it. And then they're thinking, okay, what number comes before it? What number comes after it? What's one more? What's one less? And they need to find it on the grid. And again, that is a collaborative game that students kind of work together to fill up that whole board. Now that game right there is included in my print and play number sense unit. And I absolutely love this game. It's filled with six different print and play activities that you can use with your students. But I'll give you a little hint. I will give you that one more, one less game for free. I have it linked in the description down below. So you actually have two freebies in this video, the Seesaw one or Google Slides, the digital activity, 
and this one more, one less print and play game. So there you have five, well technically six, of my favorite games to really help reinforce those numbers zero through 10. I hope you notice that with all these games, students are really working on concrete, representational, and abstract ways to really reinforce this skill. Everything mentioned in this video, I of course will link down below, including your freebies, so be sure to expand the description down there and make sure that you grab them. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.